signs going up on Library Lawn and a crowd gathering at the fountain can only mean one thing. It's homecoming at OSU. Greetings from Stillwater, Oklahoma, the site of the 34th Annual Oklahoma State University Homecoming Parade. family and welcome to Becoming America's Greatest, 100 years of OSU homecoming. Today we look back on the traditions, the festivities, and the memories that come with OSU homecoming. We have interviews with VIPs, a preview of this week's events, and I'll even introduce you to the 1959 homecoming queen. Homecoming unofficially began in 1897 when alumni were invited back for graduation. It wasn't until 1920 that they were invited back to join the Harvest Carnival and watch a football game. And now that's when homecoming that we know today became cemented in our history. America's greatest homecoming has come a long way from its humble beginnings. In 1920, things were much simpler. We didn't have a parade. We just simply invited the alums to come back. Um, there was a new stadium at the time that held 3,300 people. And then so they designated a special section in, in the stadium for the alumni to sit. And then they had a dinner and dance afterwards. And that, that, was, the, that was all of the activities. They had about 50 alums who came back for that first homecoming. Um, the next year, I think we had close to 75 alums who returned. How has that homecoming evolved over the last 100 years? So 1930, we have our first parade, uh, and now it, it, it is opened up to the citizens of Stillwater. And so uh, in 1930, we have 17,000 people then attend the parade. It was long. It was big floats. A lot of people don't realize that the floats used to have the cars inside the float, kind of more like what a Macy's Day parade would be. Um, and so they would have huge floats where people would sit on like our beauties, our college beauties would be on them, and they couldn't turn. They couldn't turn corners because of the size of them, which is one of the reasons why our parade route is a straight mile long. The size of the floats made driving a challenge, an even bigger challenge, keeping the designs a mystery. When it came time for construction, students worked in covert locations. We built it up at, a, at the Stewart Airport at a hangar and then that morning, uh, we left about two or three o'clock um, a Saturday morning to get to the parade route. Do you remember what the design of that float was? Uh, it was the Delta Queen, um, and so it was a river boat. I was driving the tractor and I couldn't see, uh, so they would have to tell me, okay, we're getting ready to come to this intersection. Um, you know, you need to prepare to turn right. But yeah, we used walkie talkies because I couldn't see where we were. And we drove in reverse. I was going in reverse the whole way because we needed more weight on the rear wheels driving that float. Uh, uh, that, was, that was pretty exciting. For some, participating in the parade is the highlight of homecoming. For others, it's another tradition that goes back 90 years. And in the 30s also, um, living groups on campus also decorated the residence halls and dormitories too. The challenge was early on, uh, you know, when you just had banners uh, hanging from, the, from the, the buildings, and they really began to develop in the 70s as much larger uh, and more elaborate uh, house decorations. So the house decks have kind of gotten bigger and bigger. More and more people were coming out to see them, and at first they were driving around. So for years, people would get in their cars and just drive around and see all the decorations. In 66, it kind of got so big that they parked their cars, they ditched their cars and just started walking. Hence the name, walk around, because that's what you did. During deck construction in 1977, an accident at the Alpha Gamma Rho fraternity house devastated the Oklahoma State community. They would have to physically lift the scaffolding and move it then to do the next section uh, of, of pumping. And there were seven, seven or eight guys uh, that had tried to move the scaffolding. Um, and, 
it had tipped while they were moving it, uh, it began tipping and, and they overcompensated and it fell into the electrical power lines uh, that run along Washington Street there. Um, and three of the young men were killed uh, almost instantly, um, but it was, it was a horrendous event. And the one thing about it is the men of AGR have continued to recognize and honor those fallen brothers. They're always recognized in some way because they never want to forget what happened. In 2015, another accident shocked the cowboy family. Just seconds after tragedy strikes in Stillwater, horror still fresh, shock growing. So 2015 will be a day I never forget. It happened at the corner where uh, you know the parade floats and, and the bands and everything are heading north on Main Street and then they turn on to uh, Hall of Fame. So it was right at that intersection. So a woman had gone around the barricades on Main Street and drove into the crowd at the end of the parade route. We, we lost four people. Um, but um, yeah, it, it was just a horrendous sight. Um, uh, a m little memorial was developed at that little intersection. Uh, it was just, it was, it was very sad um, and, uh, yeah, difficult, difficult weekend, um, so. It'll be a day that none of us, none of us will ever forget that we're part of it. Each year during homecoming, Oklahoma State remembers those lost. It brings perspective to what the celebration is all about. The joy is, is uh, of bringing alums back into town. You know, the visitors who come in and see uh, the campus um, uh, and, and see the efforts of, of students and others, uh, that's, that's what's impressive to me. It's an honor to be here and to be experiencing this and knowing that something has stuck around and that we've been able to do it for so long. Um, it's different. It's changed over the years. But you know what? It's still our homecoming celebration and we welcome so many alumni back every year and it just means a whole lot. Since day one, homecoming has been about the alumni. And who better to talk about the alumni than Oklahoma State University Alumni Association President, Mr. Rob McInturf. Rob, alumni coming home to Stillwater this week, what can they expect from homecoming? Well, I think we can expect record crowds. Uh, by uh, not having it last year, we were all very disappointed in, in uh, everything that, uh, that we couldn't do last year. But I think people are really hungry and excited to come out, and, and we're going to see record crowds. So it should be a whole lot of fun. And you started last year, but as you mentioned, there was no homecoming. So this will be your first. What are you most looking forward to? Oh, there, there's so much going on all week, but I think uh, the two things I'm most looking forward to are the parade. Uh, the, the parade is it's going to be the largest one we've ever had. We actually had to turn away people who wanted to be in it. We had 150 entrants into the parade. Uh, and I've got a four-year-old little girl, so my wife and I will be uh, carting around our little girl, and she's very excited about the parade. And then, of course, walk around. I don't, I don't think anybody in the country puts 80 to 100,000 people walking around experiencing homecoming like we do it here at Oklahoma State. So I'm very excited to see it. Well, Rob, we know you have a big responsibility later this afternoon emceeing the fountain dying. So we will let you get prepped for that. And we will be back with Becoming America's Greatest in just a little bit. Oklahoma State University is bringing our 100th homecoming celebration to all of your screens with a brand new free streaming platform inside OSU. Watch OSU turn the fountain orange, live stream the parade, and reflect on 100 years of tradition. Come join the festivities from the comfort of your home. Download the Inside OSU app now to be a part of America's greatest homecoming.
100 years of homecoming means 100 years of tradition. From fountain dying to the harvest carnival, walk around the Sea of Orange parade. It's those traditions that make Oklahoma State's homecoming America's greatest. We don't claim to be the oldest. We don't necessarily claim to be the largest, um, but we do claim to be the greatest. Yes, other groups do pomps, decorations, other groups do parades, other groups, but I don't think you'll find another institution that quite does it the way that we do it. It's the tradition that makes Oklahoma State University's homecoming so special. The house decorations date back to the 1920s when the sororities first decorated their doors um, to welcome alumni back. Um, those have obviously grown over the years. And then the group started pairing, which then you had more people that could help build the different things. Um, so it just kind of started slowly growing to what it is today. Those modest door decorations have evolved into extravagant house decks, made out of simple materials and a precise technique. So pumping is where you wrap chicken wire around a structure and then take tissue paper and wad it up and put it inside the little holes of the chicken wire. It's obviously gotten a lot more elaborate and technical over the years, um, and I would venture to say that OSU students are the experts in the field. They actually use a software that Cross Stitch uses, and that is actually how they create the keys, so they know what color to put in each square to make it look the way that you see it now. That's, that's how they get the detail. And often many of them will work long into the night, if not a full 24 hours, um, which is where All Night Palm came to, came to be. We rented trolleys and we took trolleys around um, at midnight and we would invite um, university VIPs to ride on the trolleys and we would go to you know four or five of the, of the house decks and get out on all night pomp and you know urge them to finish. The finished decorations transform the Greek neighborhood into a spectacle, drawing thousands of visitors from the OSU and Stillwater communities to what we now refer to as walk around. Walk around is kind of like one big gigantic family reunion because you know, you walk up and down the streets and see people that you haven't seen for years and there's tons of hugging and so the, the house decks set the background for that and really make our alumni feel welcome. We routinely have upwards of 80,000 people come um, to see walk around in those four hours that the streets are closed. It's just a, one of our most significant experiences here for OSU's homecoming and probably our greatest tradition related to homecoming. Some traditions, like walk around, go back decades. Other traditions have been added in more recent years. One of the traditions that we have now that started um, when we started actually having the walk on Saturday, where the football players start at the Atherton and walk down Hester Street. One of the student executives at that time, Megan McElroy, and Megan um, just had this vision of um, painting spirit slogans on the street and so forth. The sign competition that we do on Library Lawn is a very big tradition now and we have normally over 50 student organizations, um, residential halls, and Greek life organizations that produce amazing signs. The signs provide a nice backdrop for fountain dyeing, which marks the official start of homecoming. So around 99, there was a student that was involved in homecoming planning who took it upon himself to really try to see if he could make this happen. Um, the fountain is such an iconic piece within our campus. Um, he really thought it would be a neat idea to color it orange and have that spirited kind of piece of homecoming. And there you go, it's official! We are in homecoming week of 2019. It just brings together so many OSU symbols um, from homecoming, which obviously um, we're celebrating the centennial this year, to America's brightest orange. So I think being able to tie that orange spirit um, into the kicking off of homecoming every year is probably my favorite homecoming tradition. Another favorite tradition, the Sea of Orange Parade, which isn't complete without a grand marshal. 
Uh, some of the notables um, that we remember are Bob Curland, the famous OSU basketball player, the first seven-footer in college basketball, Allie P. Reynolds, for which um, OSU's longtime stadium was named after. We had Garth Brooks, Barry Sanders, and Robin Ventura. They all joint Grand Marshaled that year. Um, they were also inducted into the Alumni Hall of Fame at that same time. This year we're looking forward to having back uh, Burns and Ann Hargis. They'll be the Grand Marshals for this year's Centennial. It's the tradition that makes OSU's homecoming so special and why it's been the greatest for 100 years. To be here for the Centennial celebration for me has just been um, such a, an honor, really. Who would have ever thought when I was a student that I would be able to be part of this in this way. It's been an incredible experience and homecoming is obviously one of our favorite times of year. Being able to be here and see it happen, especially having to postpone it through the COVID-19 pandemic, um, it's just been a, a really a highlight of my career here. Everyone says you don't really understand OSU's homecoming until you experience it for yourself. And joining me right now is Ariel Schulten, executive director of this year's homecoming, and she's experienced quite a few. Ariel, what can you kind of give away about what we can expect from this centennial celebration? Well, I would just say that you should definitely expect big pomp and circumstance. Everything on OSU's campus really is America's brightest orange, and so make sure that you are just wearing your brightest orange at all times and you are ready to y'all go pokes at any moment. And I asked you this on the Inside OSU podcast, but I have to ask again, what does it mean to be the, the Centennial Homecoming's executive director? Homecoming is not only one of the largest student-run events in the country, it's also one of the longest standing traditions as far as universities go. And so the Centennial really is just that culmination of a hundred years of hard work and unity between past, present, and future students. And final thing for you, I know you have a very busy day ahead, but why is OSU's homecoming America's greatest? It truly is America's greatest because you can see the crowd already forming here. Everyone just supports it so much and is willing to work so hard for it. So it just really goes to show that it truly is America's greatest, the number of people who love it. Ariel, we'll let you get to your fountain dying responsibilities and get set for that in just a bit. Thank you so much for your time, and we will be back with more Becoming America's Greatest 100 Years of OSU Homecoming right after this. For more than 70 years, the Student Union has played a part in America's greatest homecoming celebration, hosting students, alumni, and guests. As we celebrate its centennial, visit our iconic building that has laid the foundation for generations of cowboys. We can't wait to be here for the next 100 years. Our doors will be open extended hours on homecoming weekend, and we hope you'll join us. Stop by, explore the building, and enjoy a meal. And don't forget to buy your homecoming t-shirt, because after all, life happens at the Union. OSU alumna Gaetra Coggins is the epitome of loyal and true. Her family has been attending OSU since it was Oklahoma A&M, before homecoming even existed. She was a senior senator when Wes Watkins served as SGA president, and she was even best friends with Wally Funk. But of all of her amazing Oklahoma State stories, her best comes from the fall of 1959. It is wonderful. I've heard all of my life about the celebration of homecoming and OSU goes all out for it. And it is so heartwarming. I think I attended every one of them when I was going to school there. I've been a faithful homecoming person because <laughs> it's part of the family. For Gaetra Coggins, being an Oklahoma State Cowboy is a family tradition. It's been that way for over 100 years and five generations. I know that there was at least, just in my generation with me and my cousins, there's three. Uh, me, my brother, and my cousin Maddie all came here. Um, and going back even further, there's too many to count. My great, great, Lots of great grandfather was on the first football team here and was roommates with Ed Gallagher. 
And when they were in school together, it became apparent that Ed was going to go into wrestling instead of football. And when they parted in 1910, Ed said to my grandfather, Bert, send me one, meaning a wrestler. My brother was a state champion wrestler, got a scholarship in wrestling under Myron Roderick. After one of the wrestling matches, which my grandfather attended, he took Sandy out to the cemetery where Ed Gallagher is buried. And he put his arm around Sandy and bowed his head and said, Ed, I brought you one. Her grandfather brought Gallagher a wrestler, and Gaitra wanted to bring her grandfather a crown. Oh my gosh. <laughs> well, first of all, there was a whole room full of candidates that were vying for the role, okay? So they asked me why I wanted to be homecoming queen. So I told them the story about how my grandfather had two girls and no wrestlers but he was also a member of the football team. So I said, I wanna be out there on that football field for my grandfather. And he was there watching at homecoming, 1959. It was the greatest thrill of my life. Well, they formed my initials, GH. And of course, I was totally oblivious to that. My grandfather knew it before I ever did. <laughs> She's very humble about it. Uh, she only brings it up when people start to bring up football and OSU and stuff like that. She doesn't like to boast it too much, but she definitely wears it with a lot of pride. It was a wonderful, wonderful tribute to my grandfather. Gaitra will be honored this year as part of Oklahoma State's 100th homecoming celebration. She will ride in the Sea of Orange parade again, 62 years after she was first crowned queen. It's something that I'm gonna be remembering for the rest of my life. Um, I can't say that I am gonna be happier in that moment than I have been in my entire life. It'll be very nice to share that moment with my whole family. Um, and it'll be, very, it'll be something I hold very close to my heart means gold. <laughs> Orange gold, of course. <laughs> I almost get teary just thinking about it. It just is something that just in my heart, I can't believe it. Just to think that everyone in my family has been so loyal to Oklahoma State. It's just a memory I shall cherish and treasure. This is the second time in recent history that Gaetra will get to ride in the Sea of Orange Parade. In 2017, she said it was her favorite homecoming memory besides being queen. Her entire family was here for the celebration and her son made a phone call to get her in that year's parade as well. More coming up right after this. Oklahoma State University is bringing our 100th homecoming celebration to all of your screens with a brand new free streaming platform inside OSU. Watch OSU turn the fountain orange, live stream the parade, and reflect on 100 years of tradition. Come join the festivities from the comfort of your home. Download the Inside OSU app now to be a part of America's greatest homecoming. I am back here with arguably the man of the hour, Mr. Wade Blackburn, the person responsible for dyeing this fountain orange in just a bit. Wade, when we talked the other day, you told me an interesting fact about this fountain. Where did this marble come from? I was told it came from the bathroom stalls of the old Murray Hall that was salvaged for use in the bottom of the fountain. So repurposing old buildings and making it an amazing fountain here on campus. And wait, how long have you been responsible for the fountain dyeing event? 
Well, I started working for OSU in February 2015, so a little under seven years. What is your favorite part about fountain dyeing? Uh, putting the dye in is about it. Otherwise, it's a big pain because everyone messes with it. <laughs> And you told us another interesting thing earlier this week about what colors are being used today. Well, it's a mixture of an electric orange food coloring and, and regular orange food coloring. It's just what we can get. We've switched back and forth a few times through the years. And the electric orange gives it a little bit more of a, a glowing pop when I use that. So today it's a mixture of the two. And together they make America's brightest orange. Well, Wade, I know you have a lot to do final preparations before Fountain Dying kicks off in just a few minutes. And if you cannot be here at Fountain Dying today, don't worry. We have a whole week of activities planned for you. Inside OSU's Maggie Burke and Dallas Haggerty have the rundown. On Monday, kick off the week with the student homecoming tailgate from 5 to 7 at the Kerr Drummond Plaza. The game is on Saturday, but it is never too early for free food and games. Plus, you can get a picture with Pistol Pete. The festivities continue on Tuesday, right here at the Payne County Expo Center from 6 to 8 p.m., home of the Harvest Carnival. Your entry fee? One can good of your choice. We hope to see you and your OSU spirit. On Wednesday from 5 to 7, stop by the Hester Street Painting to help send off our cowboys on their spirit walk. All fans are welcome to stop by and paint words of encouragement. On Thursday, it's Orange Reflection Night, right here at the residence halls. From 9 to midnight, be sure to come check out the dorms decked out in every cowboy's favorite color. The Homecoming Royalty Court is set to judge the dorms, so be sure to come out and admire the hard work and dedication. When people think of OSU's homecoming, the words walk around come to mind. Do not miss Oklahoma State's greatest tradition on Friday from 5.30 to 9. Pick up a map on the south end of Library Lawn and enjoy the great decorations made by the students of the Greek community. Then the next morning, line the streets at 9 a.m. for the annual homecoming parade. And the festivities conclude at Boone Pickens Stadium when our Cowboys take on the Kansas Jayhawks. Go, Go Pokes. Pokes! For a full list of this week's events, visit orangeconnection.org. And if you're interested in learning more about Homecoming's history and what to expect from this week, check out the podcast with David Peters, the head of OSU Archives, and Executive Director Ariel Schulten on Inside OSU Podcasts. I have had an amazing time with you guys today, recapping some of the greatest times from OSU's Homecoming. From how parades began to the evolution of decks, it has certainly been an awesome experience, and I cannot wait to experience my first ever OSU homecoming this year. We are just about ready to get started with Fountain Dying. I see the president here, Pistol Pete. So the only thing left to say is go Pokes. There are several reasons why we can consider Oklahoma State's homecoming as America's greatest. I really think it is the, the amount of people that's involved in making it what it is. And the fact that we're just so unique and that it's driven by student participation. And to me, that's what makes it so spirited. Having 80,000 people attend an event that isn't even the homecoming football game um, is really a testament to the passion and the love that OSU alumni and fans have for this tradition. It's like Christmas or, um, for Oklahoma State University fans. Homecoming is really something they anticipate for the year leading up to it. I don't think you'll find another institution that quite does it the way that we do it.